Okay, guys, let me start again on the PowerPoint. So let's try this again. Welcome. The service will begin soon. Get comfy and pull up a chair. Friday worship, fourth Friday of Easter. There we go. Okay, thank you, choir. Yes, he does change everything. Well, we have a few announcements for today. New car coming this weekend. 
That's as in June, but probably this weekend or within next within the next week. Another successful semester at Word Study will continue in the fall. That was confirmed. Unfortunately, we were unable to film the Fenway trip because there was no table available on the tee on Saturday. So we're going to try that again when Eduardo comes back and actually go up there again with him as that will be his first game at Fenway. And like I said, he is leaving us today for three weeks in El Paso, Texas, and he'll be returning since five. So we wish him well. And obviously we want, we will keep the communication with him. Uh, more walkthroughs on assignments, games, and so on coming this summer. Also, if my laptop continues to have issues where the dreaded blue screen appears every now and then, I will be purchasing a substitute laptop. Meaning that if this one has to go in, I can continue my work and production so that way I can get these videos out to you guys as this format seems to be working. <clears throat> Anything else that comes to mind that needs to be announced? No, so we come before him today on this Good Shepherd Friday, and this is him revealing that he is our Good Shepherd who is with us every day. Receive the call to worship. Awake, rise up. There is much to be done in the Lord's name today. Get ready to worship and to serve God. We are ready to hear God's word for us and to respond in action and love. Open your hearts to God's will this day. Praise be to God and who watches us and guides us. Amen. And will you please rise and sing with me number... It's either 16 or 43 in your celebration. All hail the power of Jesus' name.
You made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace. To the glory of your name, amen. And the second hymn is, You Are My All in All. Very good. Please be seated. And the anthem today is Jesus, you're my place. Oh, oh, oh. 
So we come to the place of prayer. It's another one of his gifts where we can bring our lives and the lives of others that we know. Of course, we want to wish Eduardo well as he is leaving us tomorrow morning for three weeks. We want to pray that this new car comes sooner rather than later. And obviously, we want to keep praying for the people in Ukraine that uh, this comes to an end. And of course, I'll give you opportunity to lift up those that you know as well. So the first song today is 3D4, Spirit Song. We'll say the first verse, pray, and then the second verse. Lord, this afternoon we come before you 
knowing that you are all that you say you are. You change everything in our lives and you are our place. Whether it's coming out of a year where it's been very unusual to not being able to go places that we want to go to, having to rely on others. But through all of this, we it is a learned experience of what it is like not to have something that you need in order to function. It's like a lot of other things in life that we need to be able to live our lives. We are ever so thankful for Eduardo. It is a blessing that came from you. He is an amazing person and we wish him well in El Paso for three weeks. We look forward to him coming back. And we face adversity this semester. Some of the challenges were losing Wilbur. Wondering if we would fit in to this new place of employment. It turns out we do fit in there. And as is the case so often when working with the public, you never know what you're going to expect. We thank you again, as usual, for letting, for Graham letting us use her car. As those days may be coming to an end very soon. We want to think about the people in Ukraine and continue to pray that this comes to a stop. We know that this needs to stop sooner rather than later. And we also pray that our numbers in this nuisance that's been going on for three years now, that those numbers come down so that we can face the end of this. It has gone on for too long and it needs to stop. And for those of you at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And as always, we thank you for the Boston Terriers in our lives. Of course, we thank you for the late Wilbur. We thank you for Willow, for Milo, Lenny, and all other bosses out there, even ones that we don't that we don't even know. We would pray that that new Boston comes this summer, and it and Wilbur would be very impressed. And we know he, he is impressed with everything that everything that has gone well this semester. And even in that meeting on Tuesday, which I will talk about in the message. And so it is in that prayer that you taught us saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And as you know, in PowerPoint, the second verse is the whole song.
Let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you and His Spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lambs. Jesus, come and fill your lambs. Oh, come and sing the song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your heads in sweet surrender to his name. Oh, give him all your tears and sadness. Give him all your years of pain. You'll enter into life in Jesus' name. Jesus, oh Jesus. Come and fill your lambs. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lambs. So with negativity comes positivity, and that positivity is the gift he gives to us in our lives. Whether it's a new car, a new relationship, a successful semester, and a new home. And with all that in mind, I invite you to please subscribe to this channel. And let me know what you think of the walkthroughs of some of the assignments and some of the games that we have been working on. And the offertory today is Let There Be Worship, Let There Be Praise. And with the ushers, please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offering.
That is one of my favorite anthems as well. And by the way, if something is not offertory, me and it'll be an anthem soon. And that that will be the anthem probably the next time we have communion, which will be June second. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. <coughs> Excuse me. Love ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Love Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Where is true in everyday life, there can be worship and praise, as it is our God-given right to worship you. So in the music of everyday life, we can take an hour out of our lives to worship you. So take these gifts and multiply them, and make yourself known throughout the world, as we continue to wait for that new car, and we are ever grateful for Eduardo and and we look forward to what lies ahead when he comes back. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. And yes, this service is dedicated to Eduardo. Okay. So, we have three readings today. And since this is Good Shepherd Friday... The first one is, you guessed it, Psalm 23. And then we'll read John 10 and at 9. Psalm 23. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You had better be down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-quarts dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessed. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I am back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. And now the John chapter 10. Starting with verse 22. They were celebrating Hanukkah just then in Jerusalem. It was winter. Jesus was strolling in the temple across Solomon's porch. The Jews circled him and said, How long are you going to keep us guessing? If you're the Messiah, tell us straight out. 
Jesus answered, I told you, but you don't believe. Everything I have done has been authorized by my father. Actions that speak louder than words. You don't believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them real and eternal life. They are protected from the destroyer for, the, for good. No one can steal them from out of my hand. The father who put them under my care is so much greater than the destroyer and thief. No one could ever get them away from him. I and the Father are one in heart and mind. And now the Acts chapter 9. Start with verse 30 cents. Down the road away in, Lo in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabithia, gazelle in our language. She was well known for doing good and helping out. During the time Peter was in the area, she became sick and died. Her friends prepared her body for burial and put her in a cool room. Some of the disciples had heard that Peter was visiting in nearby Lydia and sent two men to ask if he would be so kind to come over. Peter got right up and went with them. They took him into the room where Tabithia's body was laid out. Her old friends and most widows were in the room mourning. They showed Peter pieces of clothing the gazelle had made while she was with them. Peter put the windows, excuse me, Peter put the windows all out of the room. He knelt and prayed. Then he spoke directly to the body. To Bithia, get up. She opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He took her hand and helped her. Then he called the believers and widows and presented her to them alive. When this became known all over Joseph, many put their trust in the master. Peter stayed on, on a long time in Job as a guest of Simon the tailor. And here ends the reading. May God add a blessing to the reading of these holy words. So Jesus as our good shepherd is basically a way of him reinforcing there in Psalm 23. We are his sheep. We recognize his voice. And it kind of, and it still falls under the category of, is this what you were expecting? As I mentioned many times before, and I will continue to mention, everything builds on top of each other. So all of those things were, were, wrote that were written in the Psalms, the Old Testament and the New Testament, all of those are reinforced in different ways. I mean, just think about it. Another example there in the last read where a woman was dead. And she rose again. Now, how is that even possible? How is it when we die how is it possible that we could just open our eyes and continue living? It is possible because he is our good shepherd. It is this invitation that he gives to us saying that we are his sheep. And, and anybody that recognizes his voice are, are those sheep. 
not literally sheep that go bah, but a it's a way in which he presents himself to us. The other thing here is I wanted to talk to you about what occurred on Tuesday. So I was called into work a half hour earlier than usual. You see, my shift didn't start until four on Tuesday. So my boss calls calls me and he says, can you, says, I need you to come in for 3.30. I thought, okay, okay. I thought, okay, whatever, cool. Well, little did I know it wasn't going to be an extra, it wasn't going to be just an extra 30 minutes, which it was, but there was something else, there was something else going on too. Something didn't seem right. So I walked in, I said hello to everybody that, you know, like I usually do. And then, <sighs> <clears throat> Sorry, my meds are like kicking my butt today. Anyway, so it was a meeting with the dean. Now, as you guys know, if you get called into the dean's office, you know they something went wrong. Either you did something wrong, or you were, or you were accused of doing something. So I got there at three thirty, and the dean wasn't there. So I was like, like, uh, okay, so y you. So you call me in here at 3.30 and then he's not here. Because my first thought was that it was going to be on teams like everything else in the last few years have been. But no, this was in person. So we go into this classroom and it is myself, another coworker, both bosses. And we get told about a student that complained about us. There were emails written to the Dean from this student that were this long. Why? And all of those allegations that were made were false. Some of those allegations were that we were all racist, we were talking about sets at uh, we asked her, you know, what was the last time she took a bath and things like that. Well, nobody, well, n nobody said those things. I didn't hear anybody say that. And, uh, and, you know, nobody did. But there was one piece of this where I went wrong. Now, when the student was not around, and I've talked about this situation before, I would joke with my coworker and just just be like, I guess he's a Karen. Like, or, oh, so this is what a Karen is. You know, the joke that goes around of being a Karen 
Which obviously she was. Which obviously she meant. She, which obviously she probably is because she was because she has been able to get away with this over and over again. It appears. Another example of, is this what you were expecting? She didn't get her own way, and so she made up false allegations about us. It's just the... The audacity of people that to do this is it's it absolutely blows me away of how many times where we think we are in the right but people put us in the wrong it absolutely blows me away and this is the same thing. This is sort of the same sort of thing with Charlie too. Just because you don't get your own way does not mean you can, does not mean you can go do that. It's absolutely it, you know. It, it, so after that meeting with the dean, we were all shook up. My coworker had left for the day, and I was there. And I was really bothered by it. I was troubled by it. Because I honestly thought that I was going to get fired. No. The boss came over and he said, he said, you said, you did nothing wrong. You're, you're okay. It said, he said, it's going to be okay. So the next day comes, and what do you know? Right on cue, the student that that does this, that did this, came in, and she gave us all dirty looks. And if looks could kill, I don't think I would be here. Because this is because this it really seems to me like this is something that she does. But she doesn't get her own way. And she was slamming doors too. She would, you know, she would wrestle with instructors. It was just, it was just disgusting. It really was. It was disgusting to think that here you are, you try to go in and do your job. You know, the job that you wanted, that you got. And then you have to deal with this. The dean, had, you know, the dean, he has better things to do than to deal with this. It became laughable. But can you, but, thank God, but thankfully, yeah. But thankfully, you don't have to deal with her anymore. And we're going to continue on in that job in the fall semester, which is awesome. We'll be able to get there too. So you see, 
when he with him being our good shepherd, he can walk us through every situation. And that's exactly what he did that day. Uh, earlier this week, he walked us through that situation. Excuse me. But the bottom line is this. If he, with him being our good shepherd, life gets better. Life will go on. Life happens. Things break down. So it is an invitation to what is to come this summer and this whole is this what you were expecting is something that continues to be revisited time and time again because it's, because it's such an important concept to know about let's pray lord you are our good shepherd we are your sheep we recognize your voice. And so as we leave this sacred place today, may you be with us the rest of the day. Amen. So our closing hymn today is Near to the Heart of God.
So our water deception section here is going to be. Receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you walk through life as he is our good shepherd who is alive in us and through us this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, let us now depart in peace who in thy name are gathered here. Disclose the brightness of thy face and be forever near. Amen. And thank you for watching today's service. Please like, comment, and share with a friend. And we will be back later with another walkthrough of an assignment or a game yet to be determined. And hopefully the dreaded blue screen will not make an appearance. Amen and thank you for watching as always. And have a great weekend.